Hi, I'm John from Just Whiskey. If you like today's show, which I think you're gonna, please give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And thanks for all the subscribers coming on board, for all the comments and the support. And remember, folks, it's Just Whiskey. Today, I'm really excited about uh, this show. This past weekend, I attended... Um, a Brook Laddie event featuring the movie The Water of Life, directed by Greg Swartz. Um, it was hosted by Norfolk Whiskey Group, and um, there was hosted by the owner of Norfolk Wine and Spirits, Bikram, and he is the ultimate host. Um, there was very nice food provided, um, very nice authentic Indian food, um, as well as uh, the a, a brand the brand ambassador from um, Brook Laddie um, named Jason Cousins, who brought many many um, samples for us to a uh, try. Um, and, you know, when you go to one of these whiskey events, the samples are are a pre-measured pour. I believe they're quarter ounce. So they're very tiny pours. Um, so I'm going to kind of try to relay a virtual tasting from my memory and my notes of most of the offerings that were provided um, this past weekend. Um the first pour was Brook Lottie 4.1, uh, the Black Art series. And the, it was a fresh bottle that was just cracked open. And I believe I, I received the third sampling. And again, very, very small amounts. So what I'm relaying are really just... Um, first impressions of a small sample, um, you know, of a neck pour type type of type of thing. Um, so I was really excited about the 4.1 Black Art. We've heard so much about it. It's like the Holy Grail, right? And uh, if you can even find it, you know, it's it goes for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Um, anyway, um, on my Brief tasting notes, it was um, thick vanilla cream and honey on the nose and palate. So it, it had a nice vanilla, creamy honey um, with um, about a medium finish. Then I was able to try the classic eight. Um, so we know that there's the... Um, classic well there was the classic eight the classic 10 which are discontinued now it's just called the classic lottie it's a non-age dated um but jason cousins brought us the classic eight um which i believe was a retail um like an airport retail exclusive at the time um it was discontinued quite a while ago um i really enjoyed the classic eight i um it was one of the highlights for me um, actually, I found it to be um, very interesting. Um, then we tried the Classic 10, which is discontinued. I thought that was nice, but it was a bit boozy. Then I tried the Isla Barley, uh, the Beer Barley, non-peated. Um, so far, that what I've been talking about are non-peated offerings. The beer barley I thought was very interesting, and that was another highlight. Um, that one retails for a little bit more money. That one retails for about $120. Um, but the the 2010 Brook Laddie beer barley um, I found to be very interesting. Again, just with that, you know, you only have a couple of little tastes, and that's and that's about it. Then we try the uh, the clad the classic Scottish barley which um, is an NAS, which is discontinued as well. And I thought that one was okay, to be honest with you. 
Then we went on to the heavily peated. Um, they had the uh, Port Charlotte Isla Bali uh, 2011 and 2012. Um, I don't remember much about those two, to be honest with you. Then they had the Octomore 6.3, which I found to be very smoky. Um, I know that's considered to be like the holy grail out of all the Octomores to, to date. Um, and I've had a few Octomores. So I had high expectations for the 6.3. Again, just based on the very small pour, I thought it was very a very smoky. That was the prominent um, experience for me. The Octomore 8.1, that was another highlight. I found that one to be very interesting and I would take that over the 6.3 again from my brief experience with it. Um, and then they had the, um, the Octomore 10 year old. Um, it had a red tag on the label. So uh, I have batch three, which I have not opened. So it was an older version before that. Um, I, it, I don't know if it was batch one or batch two of that heavily peated Octomore 10 year old. And I thought that was, um, that was very nice. Um, then after the film in continued tastings, we had a live um, Zoom with the director, uh, Greg Swartz. And something interesting about the Water of Life documentary is that um, there was an extra 10 minutes of featuring Springbank that was not included um, in the 90 minute Water of Life film. And at some point, that might be like bonus footage that gets added on to uh, you know a, a DVD uh, collection that might become for sale at, at, at some point in the future. But also too, um, he let us know that um, PBS um, bought rights to the movie and they are gonna air it um, probably um, Father's Day weekend of, so whatever that is, June 18th or June 19th, um, second or third weekend of June of 2022, um, PBS um, tentatively is gonna be showing the water of life and possibly maybe they'll sh they'll show that 10 minutes of spring bank footage you know i don't know um and greg swartz the director of water of life is also working on other projects and he's um currently working on a documentary about independent bottlers and I think he's got a list of 30 independent bottlers. And the last one that he's waiting to complete is um, John uh, Glazier from um, Compass Box. Um, and then once he gets that interview, then he's going to start uh, post production and editing and that kind of thing. Um, related to Scottish whiskey documentaries but in no connection to my knowledge with greg swartz netflix has uh, one or two comparable um S scottish whiskey documentaries focusing on jim McEwen and brooke laddie and it's one of them it, one of them's called a golden dream but they could have changed the title because um, there's two of them that are very similar and they came out the same time. So you can go to Netflix and just do, you know, search for uh, Scotch whiskey documentaries, a golden dream and or <laughs> a golden dram. Um, if you go on, um, if you type in either one of those, there are um, a trailer for each one of those. But the trailers are very similar. Um, so I don't know if they decided just to kind of 
combine you know and choose a, a title but either it's a golden dream or the golden dram um but it's beautiful cinematography cinema photography and great documentary focusing on jim McEwen, scotland isla and brook lottie um and then also too uh greg swartz mentioned in his document that he's working on about the uh 30 independent bottlers um and maybe this is uh, somewhat convoluted. Again, there was a lot going on, a lot of tastings, people around. and um, But what I thought he said was that there was an independent bottler um, in the UK called True North. Um, but they're unable to distribute or do business in the United States because somewhere in the United States, um, there is an American spirits company with that same name. But I tried fact checking that and I couldn't find any information about um, an independent an independent bottler called True North. But of course, there is one called North Star Spirits. So then I started second guessing myself and, and I said, maybe he was talking about North Star. And but if it was True North or North Star, he said the independent bottler to do business in the States would have to alter their name for the United States. And I think they had, they have to call it like NNS. So if it was, um, if it was true North, then it would be T and N, you know, and if he was talking about North star, then it would be NNS. But, um, sorry if that's a little confusing and convoluted, but, um, but yes. Um, so now you're wondering, okay, <laughs> what are these what are these bottles doing over here? So now we're going to review, um, finally, um, the Brook Lottie non peated Isla Barley, 2011. Why they call it 2011 is that is the year that it was distilled, and it comes in at 50% ABV, non chill filtered non-colored, non-peated, and there are five farms that grew barley for this particular bottling, this distillation. <clears throat> and what's interesting is on the back of the bottle, it says six aged years in oak casks, distilled in 2011, bottled in 2018. However, the Colombo in me, the detective in me. So I looked at the laser code, the laser dating code on the back of this bottle, and it says that this was, well, bottle, but this was laser stamped November 2nd, 2020. So that's confusing to me. So when they say bottled in 2018, maybe it was, and then maybe it just sat on shelves until 2020. So that's interesting that the laser code is different from what they say it's bottled. Because I always thought that that laser code meant that's when it was bottled. But maybe that's just when it's actually packaged and um, put into cartons, sealed up, and shipped out. So that's I found that to be interesting. Because um, if that applies to everything else... Um, I've always took that as gospel, that that laser code, as the actual like bottling date, but um, apparently it's not in this particular case. Um, so this particular Brook Lottie, uh, Isla Bali, 2011, it is matured in 75% fresh bourbon barrels and 25% second and third fill sweet white wine casks. Um, and again, this retails for about 65 to $70. The classic Laddie, which is a non-age state stated as well, um, that retails for less, you, about 50 to $55. So 10 of, you're paying 10 to $15 more for the Isla Bali that's that's in this okay um 
on the nose. Prominent, prominent vanilla and fruit stripe gum. Um, I highly recommend letting this, you know, warm up in your hand at, at room temperature. Um, let it let it open up in the glass um, for 10, 15 minutes. Um, it's a six year old. I know, you know, a minute in the glass for every year in the cast would just like six minutes, but this one needs a little a little more time to open up in, in from my palate, my opinion. So the nose, prominent vanilla and fruit stripe gum on the nose. The palate. Mm. A light sweetness, a pleasant sweetness. That fruit stripe gum is more prominent um, a little bit of honey it's um a tad hot that i attribute to its youthfulness okay so it is a bit spirity um and a, just a, a wee tad hot but i would say more spirit more spirity than hot it also has a slight funk to it, believe it or not. When I say um, funk, a slight sulfur-ish note, but I, I would not call it sulfur, but a slight, a slight sulfur vegetal uh, funkiness to this. Um, it's not prominent, but it is there. Um, just enough to make it interesting. Um, and the finish is dry a drying finish with uh, roasted barley notes and also it has a lingering aftertaste of you know when you you chew uh, a sugar-free bubble gum or it doesn't have to be bubble gum per se but a non-minty gum um, so we'll just say a, a sugar-free added to your sugar uh, what am I trying to say like a, almost I don't want to say saccharin but when you finish chewing a sugar-free bubble gum that's the aftertaste that, that 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 just lingers on it's not unpleasant by any means but um, that's what it reminds me of and then also too and the finish with that sugar-free bubblegum aftertaste a slight uh, refreshing menthol note that kind of um, parallels and commingles with that uh, that used bubblegum that sensation that you have in your mouth when you finish a piece of gum that's just uh, been in your mouth too long um, that's what that reminds me of um, how would I um, score this? Um, it's a very enjoyable, delightful, um, not overly complex by any means. Um, I'd give it a solid 85. Um, would I buy another bottle? Um, no. But there's many bottles that I wouldn't buy again because just because I have too many. So um, only something that's r extraordinary, that's reasonably priced, is usually something that I might buy a, a backup of, um, something I find really uh, interesting. Um, but um, but I've, I've, I've seen so many reviews, and I've been wanting to try Brook Laddie, and I'm, I'm so delighted that I went to the, the uh, Norfolk Whiskey Group Brook Laddie tasting. Um, I, I learned a lot about uh, what they had to offer. Um, and my questions were answered really about what's what the Brook Laddie uh, Classic 8, Classic 10, the Isle of Bali's are all about. So um, I've gone on for quite a while with this. Um, 
my next review soon might not be the next one but it's going to be one up and coming i am going to uh review and compare the port charlotte's heavily peated um isla bali 2013 against the standard port charlotte 10 okay so um that's going to be a good one so uh Look, hope you look forward to that and just another reason why you should subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything folks so sorry if this was a bit long there was a lot to cover um but bottom line look forward to the water of life hopefully coming to pbs um sometime in june hopefully um and maybe some dvd box that available with the uh maybe some added footage about Springbank. Um, so again, uh, thanks for your patience and watching this uh, whole video here. Um, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. And remember, no matter how much it costs or how good it is, it's just whiskey, folks. So hats off to you all and take care.